Hey this is Alex. Just thought I'd show you a tool that I, I think I've used on a video or two, but I found it really useful. I actually got it after I started this whole locksport business. Um, this is a, um, I believe it's called a thickness micrometer. Um, doesn't have a name on it, but it's a um, Michitoyo 700-122. It's got a range of about an inch or 25 millimeters. Um, I believe I got this used. Um, takes a couple batteries. It's digital. I like it because it has inches and millimeters as well, um, which is handy. Um, so it works just like a regular micrometer, except it has this spring-loaded um, anvil. Or, uh, no, that's the anvil. Spring-loaded uh, plunger, I guess. Um, stem. I'm not good with the terminology. And I believe both of these faces are either carbide or some kind of hardened steel. What it's really meant for is um, coming in and measuring um, like sheet metal. So that's like 207 or 820, 0820, which is um, on the order of, uh, I don't know, so many sixty-fourths of an inch, whatever that, whatever this thing is. Um, you could use a regular micrometer, and that would work just fine. Um, I think they're a little more expensive usually. I got this on eBay used for fifty or seventy dollars. What I use it for primarily is measuring pins. Okay, so I'm actually going to drop this out of these tweezers now that I've got it, and. So we can see that's exactly seven millimeters. I probably got a pretty good reading on there, or two seven five five inches. Um, what I like is that both of these surfaces are square. Um, it's spring loaded, so if I've got a bunch of pins and I'm, you know, like trying to put them back in the the box with all the little slots, um, maybe you've dumped out a lock and you're repinning it. They all look the same to me at some point. Um, I've tried doing this with my calipers. Um, and you can do it, but it's, it's a little trickier to get them maneuvered in there. Um, you can actually, you can see there's little fittings. You can actually set this vertically if you want to. Um, or I guess you could mount it this way as well on a little stand or something. But vertically works, works well. Um, you can put it in a little, gently in a little vise, um, measuring my pins. Um, works well for other things. I mean, anytime you need to measure a distance between two relatively flat surfaces up to about an inch, uh, that goes to 26 mil, okay, reads to a hundredth of a millimeter or five thousandths of an, five ten thousandths of an inch. Another nice feature, if you're using a, um, a traditional micrometer, um, you have to develop a feel for the, how much tension to put on the um, spindle. This has a spring which I would assume is calibrated to give you a pretty good reading. So you can just kind of come in and out, make sure that's nice and square. 291, 290, something like that. That's a nominal half inch, but you see it's 498, for, you know, it's probably good for me because that means it's a little undersized or 12.65 mil. You can switch back and forth. Okay. Now, say that I was had this, and then maybe um, I want to see how much I've whittled down this end, the other end, where I've sanded it a little bit. I can actually zero this. So let's say I like that thickness. I can zero that there, and then put my other end in, and I can see that I've actually taken off two thousandths of an inch or so on the end, just. Um, Either that's just the machining error, or that's where I just did a little bit of sanding to smooth it out, um, or minus four hundredths of a mil. Okay, so you can get a relative dimension. Okay, or if I wanted to see what the size of the head was relative to the shaft, and 6.12 or just under a quarter of an inch. Okay, and of course I want to probably shouldn't let it slam like that. Bring it back to zero. 
you want to make sure that these surfaces, any whether you're using calipers or mics or any uh, any precision tool like this, you want to make sure these are free of any oil or dust or debris. Um, you'd be amazed even just a piece of lint from your paper towel could give you a thousandth or so error. Um, a little bit of uh, a little bit of grease even will give you error. Um, you may not care per getting precise, but um, you know you probably like to take advantage of the amount of precision that's in here. Comes in a little box, and of course you should probably store it in the box because it's a precision instrument. You don't want to have it bouncing around your floor um, or anything. Okay, bouncing around the shop. Don't know what this hole was for. They probably came with a standard. I know the batteries were in here somewhere, but probably came with a standard to calibrate it. Um, but that apparently disappeared. Maybe part of why it was a little cheaper. Um, the old ones came in nice wooden or metal boxes, but now you get styrofoam and or foam and uh, plastic. But it works just fine. They make micrometers that have pointy ends here. Uh, I think a thread micrometer is a good choice for that. Some of them you can re you can change the uh, these faces out. This one they're fixed, um, but um, the pointy ones would be good for measuring, like the depths on a key or even a regular key, because obviously this thick thing won't point won't fit down in there. My calipers have a, a bevel or a pointy bit on them that I can use, but you know generally mic is considered a little more precise. Um, I'm going to try to show you a trick to measure the depths on these uh, later, but I need, uh, need to collect another tool for that. They do make a, I've seen two versions of a, a key micrometer, um, which is, uh, you can see a couple of the locksmithing stores, and I think the one of the impressioning websites has one, um, I think that's a dial. Um, and it's kind of a, it kind of does this sort of thing. It's got a, like a, you know, clamp sort of thing with a dial or dial indicator here. Um, and that's nice because you can grab in around. Um, they also make, I think HPC or um, Lab makes one that's a regular kind of micrometer. Um, but that's set up for, for doing keys, so I think it has a flat and then a pointy bit. Um, you know, those were super expensive. I couldn't find any used. I didn't really want to get a specialized device just for locksmithing. This seems to do the job, um, and it was relatively inexpensive. And you can get, if you don't care about having a higher end uh, tool, I like to buy quality, but some, you know, if you're just because I'm, I don't know what I may use it for in 10 years, but. You can buy a, a Chinese version of this. This is Japanese, but you can buy a Chinese version of this for probably 20 bucks um, from your supplier and uh, or online, and um, it'll probably work just fine. You know, um, so there you are. Um, thickness gauge, Mitutoyo. Uh, this is Alex. So thanks for watching. Have fun, um, Germans. Be very, very precise. Yeah, and uh, as always, keep it legal. Not that you can do anything really illegal with a micrometer, but whatever. Okay, cheers.